All right, welcome back to the Lightning Fast Podcast. Today we are joined by Ben Harry. That's right, and I presume we're talking about the book Homegoing by Yaji Yassi today, am I correct? That's right, so let's dive right into the podcast. So tell me, how did you feel about the book? Oh, it's a wonderful book. For those unaware, Homegoing explores the concept of generational trauma, implementing slavery and its effects on those who have been enslaved, including their future generations. It dives into many interesting and lesser-known topics surrounding the idea of slavery. It was truly interesting indeed. I'm glad to hear you liked it. Oh, on another note, would you say this should be required reading for all high schoolers out there? Hmm, well not necessarily. Interesting, please explain. Alright, well to me, Homegoing was a book that those shouldn't be required reading. It should be heavily recommended to all high schoolers. We've learned from many of the author's interviews, Yaji Asi, as to why she wrote the book in the first place. Right. The whole purpose of writing this book was to satisfy her curiosity as to the history of slavery and how it intertwines with people. As to truly experience the curiosity that she did as she wrote the book, I feel like the reader should feel the same way. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Though I have to add, there's plenty of information in there that really did develop a bigger picture in my head about slavery and the sheer impact it had on people. Having not much exposure to slavery itself, I learned a lot. The book really connected to me, but not connecting to me. Well said. Moving on, it's only natural that we talk about it, but how did you feel about the progression of the story itself? Oh, I do have to say, I really loved the way the book flowed. The story was presented in a way that just really differed from many other works of literature that I have read in the past. Instead of just following a linear storyline through a single character's life, it explores multiple members from a family from the same bloodline, revealing the greater picture that generational trauma has to offer. All in all, the themes of the structure resonate well. Great observation there. There are many places in the book where that theme really stands out. Indeed. For example, on page 3, right in paragraph 1, even the way that one of the characters was born is a representation of sin that is carried on through generational trauma. The night Effia Otter was born into the musky heat of Fancyland, a fire raged through the woods just outside of her father's compound. Yeah, I can see where you're going with that. The fire comes back at multiple points in the book. I believe it's a symbolization of generational trauma itself. As fire destroys the things in its path, it tends to linger around as ash, as it never truly disappears. Right? You know, to expand on that, there is even a representation of Sen using fire right at the end of the book as well. The fear that Marcus had felt inside the castle was still there, but she knew it was like the fire, a wild thing that could be controlled, contained, as stated on page 300 of paragraph 2. Right, though I suppose that this is where a family member finally conquers the generational trauma and has come to terms with it. You know, it's sometimes crazy to think that slavery still has an impact on us today. Exactly. I feel like the message that Jiasi was trying to convey is that the actions of our predecessors can still be impacting us today. It's a good reason for why we should really be trying to dig deeper into our family's histories. Right again. Though I would argue that fire represents more on the side with having to do with the shame and regret of Marx's family line from having partaken in slavery. I personally thought the water was more representative of the effects of slavery itself. Well, now that I'm hearing you say it, it does make sense. Slaves are often carried on boats that travel on long distances through oceans after all. Marjorie's side of the family also happened to be on the side the experienced the effects of slavery head on and she had a fear of water. Yeah, there seems to be more than meets the eye here. I also wanted to ask you about that black stone pendant. It reappeared in the story multiple times as well, didn't it? Right. It was also a thing that came up one last time on the final page of the book. In that final scene, what Marcus felt was that she lifted the stone from her neck and placed it around Marcus's. Welcome home. He felt the stone hit his chest, hard and hot, before finding its way up to the surface again. So, what did you think of it? From what I'm able to infer, I think this black stone is meant to symbolize the connection that one has to their family members and culture. Ethia's side of the family got to keep the stone all the way to the end, and her side of the family got a much closer connection to the origin of their culture, and vice versa. Ah, that would make sense. It might have led to her descendants like Akua who have felt the connection to trauma from slavery directly. I heard it's actually trendy to be tracking connections and relationships between people in the past nowadays. Well, that's how the whole Kevin Bacon degrees the separation thing came to be after all. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. This book is like the product of that curiosity that Giassi has to offer. Well, it seems like that is all the time we've got for today. Any closing thoughts? Definitely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The book is a great read that will allow you to have a whole new outlook on slavery and can even make you reconsider the ethics of people in general. I would recommend it that you go read it sometime. Well, that's it for today. We'll see you all later.